Next up in our post-virus health check of some key industries, the travel and leisure sector. It is another biggie and one of the most impacted by virus restrictions. Now, travel and leisure, it was a $1.7 trillion industry in the U.S. in 2017, directly employing nearly 9 million Americans and supporting another 15 million jobs. But not over the past six weeks. Thousands of planes have been grounded. Others have flown with more crew members than even passengers. This is airline shed staff and cut flights. Hotels, they're being used more now to house COVID patients than for travelers in major cities. Many, they're shut down, leaving their workers out in the cold. And some are wondering if the cruise ship industry will ever return. It has been one of the biggest incubation sites, as you know, for the virus and its spread. Still, the industry says it has more bookings lined up for 2021 than it did for 2019, though a lot of people are skeptical of that statistic. The problem is, with all those headlines, travelers don't appear anxious to hit the road again. In a new poll, only a third of Americans said that they'd be willing to stay in a hotel even three months after the virus is gone or diminished. And even fewer, 28 percent, say they'd be willing to get on a plane. For more, let's turn to Pauline Fromer. Pauline, the editor, the editorial director, excuse me, of Fromer is the well-known travel book and guide series and Wow, Pauline, what a window of time we're looking into. And let's let's first start on the transportation side, which is cruise lines. Um, I think you have an older age demo and the Petri dishes that we've seen throughout this. I know there's great deals here, but you don't have to be certifiable um, if you're going to let your parents get on one of these, especially if something were to break out and they're trapped on the ship with so many places turning them away. Cruise, cruises, do we see even six months, a year from now, that this is a viable industry? I think it will all depend on how the cruise industry makes that argument. But yes, they're, well, they have their jobs cut out for them. They're going to have to convince the traveling public that cruises are safe. I think that they're going to be the most badly impacted from all the travel industries. Now, that being said, financial experts are saying that they have the wherewithal, they have the money to last for a year. Uh, without passengers, most of the big brands. Now, we get to airline travel, Pauline, and if we're using the six-foot model, you basically would have maybe two people in a row in a plane. They have to have done the math right now. There has to be a minimal threshold of passengers on a flight to make it economically viable, given the expense with the fuel and everything else attached and the crew, et cetera. Is the simple math making it really tough for airlines for the near future and even for the medium term future to be able to fly with the fear that I showed in those polls? It is as expensive in certain cases for them to not fly uh, because, for example, different types of fungi can grow in the fuel tanks unless that fuel tank is being constantly used. And so and they also have to worry about the berths that they own at the different airports. So in certain cases, they're continuing to fly even though they're losing money because they'd still be losing money even with those planes grounded. That being said, there are certain carriers, not the U.S. Based ones. I'm not talking Delta, United, American, Southwest. I'm talking about some international carriers who I think will go belly up uh, in the coming six months to a year. So, Pauline, I'm sure there's a lot of people uh, in the audience that maybe had a vacation planned or planned um, for, let's say, August. And we don't know where we're going to be um, from one week to the next, let alone forecasting five, six months from now. To that end, Hotels don't have that luxury of waiting to the last minute. Um, how are they planning, given all the uncertainty right now about ramping up with staff, about doing all the preparation? When do they realistically think that they can have a viable business again when nobody knows, um, you know, could there be a second spike in the pandemic as early as, as fall or late summer? I mean, no one knows. So how do they go about planning their business? It's a rough time for hotels. By some estimates, 50% of them could go under. And I think most consumers look at hotels and think, oh, it's a big brand, it's Ramada. Well, no, many hotels are franchised. So it really depends on how stable the individual small owner is. It's not about big corporations. It's about 
individual owners who have franchised these big names. And people forget that. For people who are traveling, um, I would recommend with airfares, let it be. If you have a flight booked for August, if you try to cancel it now and get your money back, it'll be much more difficult than it will be if the airline cancels that flight. And we're seeing them canceling and changing many flights. So I would say sit tight. That gets me to my next point uh, more broadly, uh, Pauline, whether it be for you know uh, the flight, whether it be for the hotel, the booking, or whatever the case may be, we don't know where we're going to be 60, 90 days from now. Is it your suggestion if they see a great place, a great trip that they'd love to get, there's even a great deal, should they wait to try and book that, uh, given they could be locked into something that they won't be able to enjoy? Um, or should they just, you know, take time, see where everything is? There'll probably be availabilities for almost anywhere you're going to want to go here, even in a few months. Look. These are all great deals that are out there right now compared to what we would have seen two to three months ago. You're going to get a steal compared to what we saw in that world. Will prices go lower? Possibly. Or will terrible demand drive so many uh, 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 companies out of business and force the airlines to winnow down routes to such a degree that prices will rise because there simply soon may not be enough a supply to deal with the demand. It's all really blurry. So if there's some place you really want to go, say you need to visit your grandmother across the country, I'd say buy the travel now. It could go lower. I can't tell you that, but it still will be a good deal. Just make sure that the company you're traveling with is solvent. Do a little research and also uh, uh, make sure uh, that you have very, very good guarantees in place allowing you to cancel. Good advice in uncertain times. Pauline, thank you for the time. I appreciate it. Thank you. I know I speak for myself, and I think a lot of you, we could use some good news right about now. And we've got just that. We're going to have that to close out the week after the break.